Hello, welcome to Cooking with Kyle, Ina, and Wilson too. Wilson, shh. It's Wilson growling in the background already. I think he's hungry. <laughs> Are you hungry? Okay, all right. Hey, so welcome to our first YouTube channel. Wilson, cut. Welcome to my first YouTube channel episode where I'm gonna be cooking four recipes from Ina's first cookbook, The Barefoot Contessa Cookbook. Today we're gonna to be cooking French onion soup with homemade croutons. So that's two recipes out of the first cookbook. And then we're also gonna be making salmon tea sandwiches, smoked salmon tea sandwiches. And then uh, the final recipe will be grilled chicken skewers with a saute sauce. So the purpose of this YouTube channel is just to really show you how easy it is to cook. And Ina always says in her cooking show how really simple her food is. And she's right, her recipes are simple. Her ingredients always call for something that normally you would have in your own pantry or very easy to find in your local grocery store, fish market, butcher, mark, uh, butcher uh, shop or what have you. Um, you know, this is not going to be something where you're going to get the full entire recipe from. Um, I'm going to leave that up to you on how you decide you want to get the full recipe. You can go on to Ina's website, order her cookbooks. You can go on to Food Network. Many of these recipes on, are on foodnetwork.com. Um, I'll give you the ingredients, but I'm not going to give you the exact measurements. I'm going to let you go and, and seek out the actual uh, recipe. So. Since this is basically a, a menu that you could have at a mini New Year's Eve gathering, I thought we'd have start off with having a little bit of champagne, or maybe a lot of champagne. We'll see how this goes. But I'm not going to have both glasses of the champagne. Um, helping me video today is my friend and neighbor down the street who lives just down the street who I've known for like what, 35 years? Is that how long we've known each other? Probably more like going on 40. Oh, <laughs> jeez. And actually, you hired me on my first job out of high school. So, <laughs> must have been a good employee. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't balance a teller window to save my life. But <laughs> it was Neither worth a good I. friendship, though. So, Happy New Year, Happy Dan. New Year, Kyle. <laughs> One of the biggest things that I think is really one of the most important things about learning how to cook is using good in good ingredients. You know, I always says use good olive oil. It's like, well, what are you gonna do? Go out and purposely try to find bad olive oil? You're not gonna do that, but you wanna use good quality ingredients. So when it says good olive oil, use good olive oil. If it says fresh squeezed lim lemon juice or lime juice, that doesn't mean juice out of a bottle, that means Invest in a, in a good juicer, a hand juicer, or a, you know, a lemon juice squeezer, or whatever. Um, but use it's most important to use those fresh ingredients. You know, Kyle, I I have always loved to cook, but I picked up so many things from you. And basically, the most important was what you just said: fresh, fresh um, herbs. herbs and fresh lemon juice. I remember you watching me take some out of a bottle one time and you're like, what are you doing? And ever since then, it really does make a difference. Fresh and we're still herbs. friends 40 years later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but thank funny. you for that. It yeah. has made a difference. So in this recipe, we're going to be using uh, fresh, parmesh, fresh shredded Parmesan for the croutons. So I'm just using a fresh Parmesan, uh, Bel Belgisio that I got from my local supermarket and uh, just using it on a box gra uh, shredder here, grater, and you need about uh, nicely shredded amount. But again, the most important thing is brush. Okay, so what we need for the uh, Parmesan croutons is we need a bag of baguette bread. Um, I got my local bakery. Um, you need about 25 slices and just put it down on your baking sheet like that. I've sliced it about a quarter inch thick 
um, diagonally in I'd say about 25 slices, about as many as you can fit onto a baking sheet. And then we've got the shredded, again, the good shredded Parmesan and the good shredded olive oil, or the good uh, olive oil. Um, and salt and pepper, and that's all we need for this one. It's a simple one. Now these are the croutons that are going to go in the homemade French onion soup you're making, right? These are going to go into the French onion soup, that's correct. And then I think what I'll do before I put on the Parmesan cheese is I have another glass, of another drink of champagne. Kyle, once you make those croutons, if you don't use them all in the French onion soup, can you save them or freeze them for salads? You can save them for salads. You can save them for um, just, they're really good for snacks, actually. Um, just bring one out and have a little snack. But um, they're really good in the soup. So if you can get a shot of the cheese I'm putting on here, Diane. Let's go around here. In the cookbook, it says to liberally, liberally put on some cheese. Well, what can I say? I like cheese. <laughs> now, right now, there is nothing on those baguettes, just the cheese. Correct. Okay. olive oil, which has a, I don't know what you call this spout, but you can lightly drizzle some olive oil over it. And another thing I always says, it doesn't have to be perfect, just drizzle it on. And another important thing is make sure you season things properly. A lot of times you think you're using a lot of salt, but you're really not. So make sure you season pretty, pretty liberally. That was just a little bit over a teaspoon that I just put on. Of kosher, kosher salt, not regular. Right, Diane? That was Abs another thing we learned. Absolutely, has to be kosher. And pepper. I like a lot of pepper. Some people don't like as much pepper, but nothing wrong with some pepper to kick it up a notch. That looks good enough. I could just eat it as soon as you get it out of the oven. <laughs> well, we might have to sample one or two. <laughs> And that was about a half a teaspoon, I would say, of pepper. All right, so we got all our baguettes on the on the baking sheet. So we're gonna go ahead and put them in a preheated oven at 400 degrees. Don't look at the dirty oven. <laughs> that just proves you cook a lot. Yeah, that's true. And then uh, we're gonna ask Alexa. How long set do a you... timer for 15 to 20 minutes? I was just gonna ask you, how long do you make them? Yep. And that's gonna start smelling really good. And I thought while we're waiting for those to cook, we're gonna put, we're gonna top them off when they come out with a little bit of uh, minced or chopped, very finely basil. And this is another thing when we mean fresh ingredients, fresh ingredients. This is gonna be in the uh, produce section of your grocery store, of course, but it's not gonna be in the refrigerated section because the best way to keep basil is not to refrigerate it. If you refrigerate it, it's gonna go bad really quickly. So it's gonna always be like over where maybe the fresh tomatoes are or where maybe the garlic is. 
Um, and you just give it a, I think Ina calls it a rough chop. <laughs> and you just roll it up like it's a little cigar, a couple leaves of it. And then you kind of just give it a little bit more rough chop to get it not minced, but a little bit of a finer chop, I guess you could say. And then that's it. We'll be ready for that, put on that uh, when the croutons come out of the, out of the oven. make the uh, butter spread, I guess you could say, um, for the smoked salmon tea sandwiches. Um, you're going to use a mixer with a paddle attachment and a, a little bit of butter, just a little bit. And what I did this morning before I got started for my day, I got all my, my ingredients prepped and I used I invested in some of these uh, cruci um, not crucible, but uh, what are they called? Ramekins. And I just put all my ingredients in and put them in the refrigerator, keep them co covered with some saran wrap, and well, it saves a lot of time and, too. And it keeps you keeps you organized. Yeah. And, uh, we're gonna put in some lemon juice with the butter. We're gonna put in some finely minced scallions or green onion. Some fresh dill, some garlic, a teaspoon of kosher salt. About a half a teaspoon of pepper. And you're gonna, you're gonna mix it till it's combined, but you don't wanna whip it. sauce for the gr lemon grilled chicken um, skewers. Just take a medium saucepan over medium heat. I'm going to come around here so we can see a little better what you're doing. Sure. Well, while you're doing that, I might take another sip of champagne. <laughs> and as that skillet's or that pan's heating up, we're going to add some olive oil. Some dark sesame seed oil. Now you specified dark sesame seed oil. That's correct. And it's in the Asian section of your. I didn't know there market. was a light and a dark. Mm -hmm. There's a black sesame seed, a light sesame seed, and a dark. See, I'm learning something mm -hmm. today. And you're going to put in about a whole bunch of red onion. <laughs> and just a little bit of red pepper flakes. Give it a little kick. Followed by another sip of champagne. Cheers. And you're going to cook those onions with look Diane, a wooden spoon or a wooden... Okay, so another thing I learned from Kyle, I had to go out and buy a whole set of wooden spoons when he couldn't find one when he was making something in my house and couldn't believe I didn't have one. Doesn't scratch your pans.
and you're just gonna cook that for a few minutes until it's kind of translucent. And while that's still cooking a little bit, we're gonna need our other ingredients for this. We're gonna need a little bit of lemon juice. Mind you. Oh, now is this coming over into the pan or? Yes. Okay. I'm going to use some red vinegar. I'm going to use some soy sauce. I'm going to use some peanut butter. I'm going to use some ketchup. I'm going to use some, um, oops, that's the basil for the croutons. And mm. a little bit of dry sherry. Oh. While you're doing that, can we say a little hello to Wilson, who seems to be And he's awake. doing good. We had to give him a busy bone because he Hi, didn't Wilson. be in the kitchen so much. Right, Wilson? Are you helping Daddy cook? And then you, see, you can see that's just, just till they're getting trained so we'll Let see. me take a look at this. Mmm, it smells wonderful already, doesn't mm, it? Yes. Too bad there's no smell smell a vision. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It just makes you hungry. And you don't want to get it cook it too long without adding the other ingredients because then the garlic that you put in is gonna become bitter. So you don't want that garlic to cook too much. You, you don't want it to burn, right? Correct. Just two. And I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in our ingredients. So we've got some lime juice. We've got some dry sherry. We've got some red wine vinegar. We've got some soy sauce. Some ketchup. And then some light brown sugar. This must be the low calorie version. Yeah, right. Oh my God, does that smell good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you wanna just kind of whisk this continuously because with the sugar and the peanut butter, it can start really caramelizing and sticking on the bottom of the pan if it gets too hot. I'm going to bring it to a boil, but you want to see how it kind of is thickening up. Oh, that smells so good. And I think that's probably, I think that's probably about right. We're grilling our uh, grilled lemon chicken skewers. And what I've done is heated the grill up nice and hot. It's about 525. Um, I've marinated the chicken breast, about two pounds of fresh chicken breast, not frozen. Uh, I've marinated them in olive oil. I've marinated them in um, fresh lemon juice, black pepper, kosher salt, and fresh thyme. All right, so what I like to do is I like to cook with a lot of indirect heat. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've got all the burners on um, high at the moment. I'm going to replace all my, all my meat 
on this side of the grill. And as soon as I put my knees on, I'm turning that side completely off. Everything else is on high. That's going to prevent any flare up. You see it's flaring up a little bit now, but I, I don't want to have any flare ups. So you're doing it on an indirect heat then? That is correct. So this side's going to stay nice and hot. This side will stay, you know, hot, but it's going to still give us good grill marks. And then when it's time to flip, I'll flip it over to that side of the grill where it's still hot and it'll give us nice sear marks. Now, Kyle, if someone doesn't have a grill or doesn't want to go out in the winter if they live in Ohio and cook this. Well, we are in Ohio. And well, fortunately, today is anomaly. About 53 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> We're going to pay for that, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. But could another, you do those? reason to have some more champagne. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll join you. I don't, um, I don't see why you couldn't do this even in a blackened... Um, cast iron skillet or if you want you're to an air fryer could you air, air fry them or a toaster oven or you know Great. whatever i had these chicken breasts on for about five minutes and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn this side back up to high and i'm going to turn this side down to low once i have the meat flipped over so what i'm doing is just flipping and if the meat sticks when you go to flip it it's not it's not ready to flip about how long did you have that on the first side? I had about five minutes. And then, so what I've done is I've turned that side up. Again, I've turned this side up on high. Now I'm going to turn this one completely off. And I'm going to turn this one completely high again. So it keeps that indirect, that higher indirect heat. So it's not going to, it's going to, again, it's not going to really have flare ups but it's going to give you a nice grill marks because you've got you putting that meat on that fresh hot grill again so it's been about another five minutes i'm going to take the chicken and i'm going to try to put it the, so that the grill marks are perpendicular to the first ones i put on if that makes any sense so if the grill marks are going this way i'm going to put it so that the chicken thing goes this way to get those perfect grill marks and again, I'm putting it in now on the cool side of the, or the hot side of the grill. And I'm going to turn it off underneath to, um, completely off. And then on high, on where I just took it and removed it. And um, heating that side up so that when you flip it again, it'll give you that perfect grill marks on the other side. Wilson seems to be having a good time at out on the patio on this very nice warm I wish we could say spring day but we just barely got into winter 53 degrees which is probably a record here hanging it's been about another five minutes so I'm going to again move this chicken over to the hot side of the grill and I'm gonna flip it so that the grill marks are perpendicular to the first set of grill marks that I put in well, marks are going this way. Can I take a look at these? Huh? Sure. Mm -hmm. So if I want it to go perpendicular, I want it to be just like that. Those were pretty thick, fresh chicken breasts, weren't they? Yes, they were. So in about total cooking time, I would say these are going to be about on here for about 20 minutes. And again, Hot side of the grill, now it becomes the cold side of the grill, turning it off. What I just removed the chicken off of is going to become a hot part of the grill, turning it back on high to continue with that indirect. All right, so it's been about another five minutes. These should be done. We'll take a quick peek at the... Oh yeah, look how mm, nice look oh, good. that caramelization on there. Mm. Mm, Wilson like, look, look at Wilson. <laughs> oh, Wilson. Does that smell good, buddy? And you liking a little bit of that, wouldn't you? You like chicken, Wilson. Mm, those look perfect. Look at those grill marks. Ah. Mm, yum. All right, so we're going to start assembling the uh, smoked salmon tea sandwiches. And so what we're going to use is some New Zealand king salmon, uh, smoked salmon. Um, 
the butter that we mixed up, which we tried some on the leftover baguettes that, what do you say, Diane? Oh. I mean, I could have, oh my God. I could have eaten a whole baguette with yeah, that. Yeah, I have to say, these are all four recipes that I have not tried of Ina's, so this is a new experience for me on all four of these, so I don't know what's going good and what's going bad so Trust far. Trust me, I've been sampling as we go, and so far it's, it's been pretty, wonderful. It's pretty good, so... Then we're going to use some uh, Pe Pepperidge Farm 100% uh, whole wheat bread, which is a nice thin slice for this. And then there's, of course, this is salmon. And what we want to do is we want to take out, put on a baking sheet, eight slices of bread, and we're going to spread butter on each one of these uh, slices of bread. And then we're going to lay the smoked salmon out on top and then we'll put that over. We're gonna cut off our crust and then cut it diagonally for little uh, appetizers. So I have spread this fabulous, oh my God, this butter on the bread. And you can see I'm, I'm not skimping on the butter. <laughs> all right, so we've covered all the slices of bread with salmon. And I've kind of kept it away from the slice or the crust because we're going to slice the crust off. So I don't want to waste any of that butter, most importantly. <laughs> All right, now we're going to just stack these salmon sandwiches up. What we're doing with the sandwiches is just cutting off a little bit of the crust. We've been sampling some of this crust. So wonderful. Oh, oh my God. I'm not going to let that go to waste. And then you just cut these in a diagonal in half. And you put these on your baking sheet, put them in the fridge with, you can put a light, uh, just a damp paper towel on top of them, wrap them in saran wrap, wrap the baking sheet in saran wrap. And you can, those will stay nice and moist in the refrigerator for a day. So you can make these ahead for a party. That's what I like, something you can make a day ahead of time. Right. So now what we're going to do is just, we've got all the sandwiches on our baking sheet. Now take a damp paper towel, lay it on top of the sandwiches. Take some saran wrap. And lay over the baking sheet. And we will store those in the refrigerator. Until tomorrow. Until New Year's Eve. Now, if you were going to serve those tonight, would you still have to put them in the refrigerator like that? Well, I guess that would depend on how, you know, much longer you were going to serve them. But you definitely hours. would need to put them in there to let that uh, spread oh, solidify. You want the butter to solidify, correct. I see what you're saying. <clears throat> so that's, that's it. For our French onion soup, we're going to use um, beef stock and chicken stock. The recipe calls for um, beef stock and veal stock, but I could not find any veal stock. So I've substitute with chicken stock, which the recipe says you could, could do. And I've got some fresh grated Parmesan cheese. I've got some dry sherry, salt and pepper, kosher salt and black pepper, and bay leaf. And we're also gonna use a little brandy in it as well. So we've got some butter melted in. I'm using a Dutch oven. And um, I'm gonna put in the bay leaf. I have already 
sliced my onions, I'm going to go ahead and add those in. And that's about, uh, that's about it for now. I'm just going to let those... And those are just regular sweet onions? I use a sweet uh, white onion, yeah. And you're going to let these saute and cook for about 20 minutes. And then we'll start adding our other ingredients. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes and look how nice and golden brown these onions have gotten. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I don't know if you can get down there and see that pan, but see all those brown black bits that are on there? We're gonna deglaze the pan. Sherry. Brandy. Oh my god, that sounds good. I'm gonna let that simmer for about five minutes uncovered. Alright, so you can see the onions are now a real golden brown. I've scraped up a lot of the bits off the bottom of the pan. Try to get them off the side because that's just all flavor once you get that deglazed off the pan. And we're going to add one and a half cups of a dry white wine. I used uh, Kendall Jackson Sauvignon Blanc and uh, a little bit for the pot and a little bit for us. What do you think? Oh, Diana? I agree. Thank Nothing you. Nothing wrong with that. Mm. Cheers. Okay, next, we're going to add in four cups of beef broth and four cups of chicken broth. Let that simmer. Actually, bring it to a boil first, and then we're gonna let it simmer for 15 minutes. So I've got it up on high now, and gonna bring it to a boil. I'm gonna remove the bay leaf, and we're almost done. Next, we're gonna add about a teaspoon of salt, and about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. So now we're gonna <clears throat> slice our chicken breasts for the chicken skewers and the saute sauce. And I'm gonna do them about mm, maybe between a quarter and a half inch thick. Some of these are gonna be too long, so then I'll cut those in half. And I think we have to be honest, Diane, we did just sample. Oh, I have to tell you. With the saute sauce and wow. If you're really looking for something so easy and so delicious, this is gonna be my go-to appetizer from now on. I can't believe it. I mean, look at that, ooh, that's so good. And then we're gonna take a chicken skewer, or a chicken skewer, that one's we may have to sample that one. It's oh, too, please, I mean, put, that, put that one for me. <laughs> we may have I, to. I keep watching that he's going to cut one too short, and I grab it. Just put one of these on each one of the skewers here. So, we've got our homemade croutons our smoked salmon tea sandwiches, our chicken, lemon chicken um, saute sauce, and the homemade French onion soup. So I think I am going to sample the French onion soup first. And I'm gonna take one of the croutons Maybe I'll take two of the croutons. <laughs> put it in the soup. And I'm gonna put some grated, fresh grated Parmesan cheese on there. I don't know, Diane, you might wanna come in and get a close up of this because it looks. Hmm, pretty amazing. 
You could also melt some other like provolone cheese on sure. there, Kyle. I think it would be really good. Oh my God, that is amazing. Absolutely. Mm. Oh my God, I can't wait to try one of these croutons. After it's been soaking in the soup. Wow. Amazing. Next, I'm gonna try some of the lemon, grilled lemon chicken skewers with the saute sauce. Wilson, don't even think about it. Um, you know he already did. I know he did. He got one of the skewers. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. Didn't you, Wilson? Oh, wow. That peanut sauce is amazing. Mmm. Very good. Last but not least, the sa uh, smoked salmon. Um, what is this? Tea sandwich. Tea sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that's too funny. Oh my god, once you put this in the fridge, and that butter spread solidifies between well with the salmon. And if I might add, I've had the pleasure of kind of tasting this as we go. And everything was so delicious mm. and so easy. I mean, I for one, I'm going out and getting the Ina cookbook. I would make all of these again. And you can purchase the cookbook at barefootcontessa.com or you can search from the recipe names which I'll have on the uh, YouTube site specifically how you can look them up on foodnetwork.com.